Hi, yeah. Thanks for getting in touch the other day. I've been trying to think about what I can share with you. I probably should have checked your email to see what it was that you were tutoring before I started chattering on. But basically, most of our games are quite... Um, well, my technical skills aren't great, let's put it like that. So when we're working with kids online, say we're doing um, times tables. I'll do this one just to know, right? We always use Zoom so that we can annotate the screen. But what we might have is just basically a board like this, which we would then adapt for each game we play. So this would be a board game, obviously. Um, you you roll the dice and that dictates how far around the board you can play. Um, all our lessons are one-to-one, -one, though occasionally you might get a sibling join in. So ones like this, it's quite easy to adapt and play with two people, but a lot of them don't really work for more than one, say the tutor and the person, or the tutor and the student, sorry. But walking around, moving around the board, um, if you land on a forfeit, you do as it says. So landing here, you'd have another go, go back one, et cetera. Um, first person to get to the win, finish wins. Sorry, the brain's not functioning today. Um, so we have kind of quite a few templates like that, which are just board games, which when I'm working on, if I'm face to face with the child, we print them out. If we're online, then um, we just bring it up on the screen and click on the annotate button and annotate accordingly. So say I'm, I'm drawn and um, you'd put the student's name or whatever. Yeah. So that's um, the sort of thing we have. That's one of the type of templates we have. Another one is, nope, that's more person to person, mix and match. I do this an awful lot. So basically what we do is, whoops, um, you have, um, this would be a pairs game. So you cover up both sides of the grid like this. Um, again, I'm just using the square on the annotate button cover up both sides and then I won't bother doing it all. I'll just do a few while I chatter. Once you've got them all covered up, what you would do is you would click on one from the left and one from the right. Um, I didn't notice, but say I'd clicked on um, a corresponding question and answer. I would then cover them in my color. I'll go purple. Um, and that would be my pair. I would then get another go you would that once I've made a mistake you would then have your go and you've just clicked on um four times eight no sorry four times seven and 28 so that would be your pair and you'd keep going oh you've maybe got this one as well actually you didn't see that was a pair there and it's the person with the most pairs at the end is the winner we do a lot of games like that um let's see what else we have um we have these for different subjects. I just thought it'd be easier to do it like that. We've got um, snakes and ladders. So pretty much similar principle to the, um, my brain isn't working, the board game that we had. And there's also things like word searches, these things like that. Um, similar source principles for English. We've also got, um, Trying to think what there is in different places. Um, uh, I'm not sure what there is under there. I think this may be younger than you said you were working with. Um, a lot of things like this for word games would do things like hangman so for example i mean we do this for kind of like grammatical terms and things as well once you've um so say i'll have my go since it's only me here but what we might do is i pick my word i won't tell you which one i've chosen um i'll go one two three four five so there's five letters in my word and you'll choose a d and an r because uh, that's in every single word yep you then pick a Z for some obscure reason that's not there so we start to draw the hangman picture and then um, as you guess the words and then if we're doing it with something like grammatical terminology or something um, 
at the end of it you have to define it same with the word searches and things like that so once you found it you have to define it I've also got kind of like the phonics games here where you have to color and match um it's a lot of what we do these days is more back face to face so our online stuff isn't as oh we don't basically have as much as we were using battleships doesn't really work online if you do any face-to-face -face stuff, let me know and I'll um I'll let you I'll send some more of this stuff over. But that's pretty much the sort of templates we have. Um and there's all sorts of things within the creative writing, but that's more kind of like getting ideas and then getting them to write about it. I tell you one we have. Let me see if I can find it. Um funny pictures. There's a game they're called Funny Pic. Well, I think it's called Funny Pictures. That's what I've always called it. Where you have a piece of paper, and the first person would draw a head at the top, and then they'd bend it over so that it can't be seen by the other person, who would then draw a body, and then it would be bent over, and the final person or the first person would draw a pair of set of legs, and then you open it up, and you're left with this kind of impression of a funny picture. What we do is on when we're using Zoom, is one of us would draw the head. There you go. This is why I don't help people with art, because I can't draw. And then you make it as fancy as you can so that you've got more to write about. And then it would be covered up with the brick. And then once, um, by you're doing that, I wouldn't look. Then once you've finished, you'll look away and I'll draw a picture of a, oh, a body. Um, again, make it as artistic or not artistic make it as creative as you can so that you've got more to write about I'll give him a scarf he's obviously here in the UK um there you go there's his scarf in fact he looks a bit like a snowman now um so we'll cover that up and then I'd give you control back and you would draw a set of legs and then we uncover the blocks and you're left with a picture and then you roll the dice and then uh, whatever you roll um, tells you the type of sentence you have to write. And that's quite good for getting familiar, uh, familiarizing people with the different grammatical terms. So that's another one we use quite a bit online. I hope that's helped. Um, if you want me to give you an idea of any of the, or if you want me to send the templates across, if it's been of any help at all, let me know. And um I will send it over. If it's not the sort of thing you're looking for, um, I hope it's kind of like giving you something food for thoughts. But have a great Saturday. Take care. And thanks for getting in touch. Bye.